complaint or face an intense investigation? Is she threatening impeachment? And will the president release a transcript of that call? New frontrunner, Senator Elizabeth Warren, surging in Iowa, edging ahead of Joe Biden for the first time. But with the critical fundraising deadline just days away, will more candidates drop out? The new threat from Tropical Storm Karen. Warnings already up in Puerto Rico. Rob Marciano with the timing and with the model show. Also tonight, the alleged bomb plot targeting two schools with plans of a possible mass shooting. What led police to a major arrest and what that suspect said to reporters. The students, principals. Public meltdown. NFL star Antonio Brown in a tirade after being cut by the Patriots, tweeting that he's done with the NFL, then blasting team owners and going after other players. Nursing home fire, the three alarm emergency in the middle of the night firefighters rushing to get more than 80 residents to safety some out of second floor windows and lost and found the incredible journey one couple undertook when their dog suddenly vanished in the woods of montana never giving up from abc news this is abc world news tonight and good evening thanks for joining us on this sunday i'm tom yamas and we begin with that breaking news from washington House Speaker Nancy Pelosi threatening President Trump with, quote, a whole new stage of investigation unless the administration turns over to Congress that whistleblower's complaint. At the heart of that complaint, President Trump's phone call with the leader of Ukraine. And for the first time today, the president appears to acknowledge they did discuss former Vice President Joe Biden. In the meantime, tonight, there are calls for the president to release the transcript of that phone call. He says he's thinking about it. ABC's David Wright starts us off at the White House. Tonight, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi set a Thursday deadline for the Trump administration to hand over a whistleblower complaint against the president for congressional review, or else, she says, be prepared for a whole new stage of investigation. At issue is what exactly was said in a July phone call the president had with the leader of Ukraine. The conversation I had with the president of Ukraine was absolutely perfect. And people better find out who these people are that are trying to subvert our country, because here we go again. The Wall Street Journal reports Trump repeatedly, eight times, pressured the foreign leader to investigate Joe Biden's son, Hunter. After first refusing to say if Biden came up on the call, today Trump seemed to acknowledge the two leaders did discuss the former vice president. The conversation I had was largely congratulatory, was largely corruption, all of the corruption taking place, was largely the fact that we don't want our people, like Vice President Biden and his son, creating to the, the corruption already in the Ukraine, in Ukraine. Ukraine's foreign minister is now backing up Trump's assertion that he didn't pressure anybody. There was no pressure. Uh, that was not pressure. I, I, I know when I give pressure. Uh, and that was not pressure. Well, if that's the case, then why doesn't the president simply release the transcript of that call? Today, President Trump did not rule that out. We'll uh, make a determination about uh, how to release it, releasing it, saying what we said. The problem is, when you're speaking to foreign leaders, you don't want foreign leaders to feel that they shouldn't be speaking openly. But the Trump administration has so far refused to allow the whistleblower's complaint about that conversation to be released to Congress, even after the inspector general for the director of national intelligence determined the complaint was credible and of urgent concern. This weekend, former Vice President Biden hit back at Trump. Trump's doing this because he knows I'll beat him like a drum. And he's using the abuse of power and every element of the, the presidency to try to do something to smear me. All right, David Wright joins us now live from the White House. And David, in that letter, House Speaker Pelosi told her colleagues she expects the administration to turn over that whistleblower's complaint to Congress by Thursday? That's right, Tom. That is when the director of national intelligence, the acting director, is scheduled to appear at an open session. Pelosi warns that if the administration fails to hand over the report by then, she says, quote, they will be entering a grave new chapter of lawlessness. Tom? We will be following following the story all week. All right, David, thank you. And now to a shakeup in the race for 2020, a new poll showing there may be a new Democratic frontrunner. For the first time, Elizabeth Warren just 
edging out Joe Biden, her opponents now sharpening their attacks. But that new poll also showing that most Iowa Democrats are still open to changing their minds as some candidates could soon be leaving the race. ABC's Rachel Scott is in Des Moines, Iowa tonight. Tonight, Senator Elizabeth Warren riding a wave of momentum in Iowa. I'm looking for every vote in Iowa. That new poll of state voters shows a surging Warren, now neck and neck with former Vice President Joe Biden. And Senator Bernie Sanders, who lost here by a razor thin margin in 2016, falling behind. Iowa data uh, is, is, shows us a very different situation than that poll reflected. But bottom line is, I think we're going to win here in Iowa. We're feeling good. What this is about is about a message. But here in Iowa, competitors taking aim at that message. Mayor Pete Buttigieg criticizing Warren for refusing to acknowledge if her Medicare for All policy would lead to tax increases. If uh, a plan is going to raise middle class taxes, you ought to say so and then explain why you think that's a good idea anyway. Hey, 2020, hey, hey. The Democratic candidates rallying here at the steak fry in Des Moines, a Hawkeye tradition. It has been from day one about investing in Iowa. The state is so important for so many reasons. According to that new poll, just one in five likely Democratic caucus goers say their minds are made up. Well, two thirds, 63 percent, say they could still be persuaded to support a different candidate. Some voters we spoke with say they welcome a narrowing field. I think it's time. We have to narrow it down. It makes it so difficult when there's so many to choose from. And they're all talented, don't get me wrong. Parading with very vocal supporters, Senator Cory Booker doing a gut check about his presidential prospects, now giving himself until October to raise enough money to keep his campaign alive. And Rachel Scott joins us now from the campaign trail live from Des Moines. Rachel, the third fundraising quarter ends at the end of this month, and we just heard Senator Cory Booker there telling you the future of his campaign depends on his performance. That's right, Tom. Senator Booker put out a fundraising email to his supporters saying if he doesn't get that $1.7 million in just about a week, he's out. Now, after that email, his campaign raked in $300,000, but that's only a fraction of what he needs. Tom? And the clock is ticking. All right, Rachel, thank you. We do move on now to the multiple storm threats at this hour. The tropics very active in both the Pacific and the Atlantic. These images from the tourist mecca of Cabo in Mexico's Baja Peninsula after Hurricane Lorena struck from the west. And tonight, a new threat in the Atlantic, Tropical Storm Karen, triggering storm watches and emergency preparations on Puerto Rico. ABC senior meteorologist Rob Marciano is here, and Rob, a lot going on right now. Yeah, that plus Lorena's moisture now getting into the inland parts of the U.S. Well, we'll start with the Atlantic. Three items of concern here. Jerry, Karen formed overnight as a tropical storm, and that one way out there, uh, we'll be watching that likely to become a tropical cyclone as well. Trinidad and Tobago really got hit hard by, by uh, Karen, even though it looks very unorganized. Now, tropical storm watches are posted for Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands, and that's where it's headed. And you know some of our uh, spaghetti models here do stall it and then move it towards the west towards the u.s after day four and five so we'll be watching that but right now we're getting moisture from lorena imelda getting into the inland u.s from arizona to new mexico getting up towards uh, the midwest and then pushing east towards pittsburgh and uh, very warm tomorrow across parts of new york and dc temperatures in the 80s and 90s feeling like summer as we get into fall the first full day of fall tomorrow time. a very warm fall so far all right rob thanks so much next the race against time in the hunt for a suspect after a tip about a possible bomb plot and a threat of a mass shooting at two schools the mayor of hazelton pennsylvania got that tip early saturday morning and a little more than 12 hours later police had a suspect in custody what he said about his arrest. ABC Stephanie Ramos has the story. Tonight, police say it was a tip that helped lead them to arrest this man, who they accuse of plotting against two schools in Pennsylvania. The I'm students, sorry. principal schools, you're sorry. Sorry for what? Making a bad joke. But police say Christian Deal's threats were serious. The 28-year-old was arrested Saturday night for allegedly threatening to use pipe bombs and conduct a mass shooting at an elementary and high school in Hazleton, Pennsylvania. Authorities say they received a tip about the alleged plot. The message indicated it was talking about a manifesto. It was talking about pipe bombs being set around this school. It was talking about this school being a diversion and then having a mass shooting at the high school. Officers even considering closing the schools if they didn't have a suspect in custody by Monday. Who knows if we would have shut the school down? Who knows if we would have just put extra patrols in the area? You know, when you have a threat of that nature, 
You just can't take it lightly in today's world. Police say it took 12 hours to apprehend Deal, who tonight is in jail and being held without bail. Police have not yet executed a search warrant on Deal's home, but he is charged, though, with threatening to use a weapon of mass destruction, which is a third degree felony, Tom. Stephanie, thank you. Also tonight, former NFL star Antonio Brown melting down in a very public way on social media after being cut by the Patriots amid a sexual assault investigation. Instead of taking to the field this Sunday, he was taking on NFL owners and taking shots at other players. Tonight, the apparent revenge tweets he later deleted. Here's ABC's Kaylee Hartung. Tonight, the NFL's biggest lightning rod going into a full meltdown. Antonio Brown's Twitter tirade starting with a declaration. Will not be playing in the NFL anymore. These owners can cancel deals and do whatever they want. Brown making it clear he'll go after money that was guaranteed by the Patriots and Raiders. Yeah, he's got about $40 million on the line. All these wounds are really self-inflicted. The Patriots fired the embattled wide receiver on Friday after a woman claimed he sent her intimidating text messages when she became the second woman to accuse him of sexual misconduct. Coach Bill Belichick remaining tight-lipped today. What was the final straw with Antonio Brown? Yeah, we're focused on the Jets today. Fly like a free. Fly like a Brown's 11-day stint with the Patriots, a roller coaster of controversy. The team blindsided when his former trainer, Brittany Taylor, filed a civil suit, accusing him of rape. Brown denies all accusations of misconduct. Today, the football world lashing out. A.B. is saying this morning, I'm leaving football. He's not. Football's leaving him. After thanking the Patriots last Friday, Brown now burning bridges, tweeting a reference to owner Bob Kraft's charge of solicitation taking a shot at former teammate Ben Roethlisberger, and even encouraging his fans' threats against a Sports Illustrated reporter, Brown later deleting the rants. It's irrational thinking, and, and, and I think he really needs some help. Now, as far as a general manager or a head coach, I would not touch him this year, next year, or ever. The NFL tells ABC News its investigation into the sexual misconduct allegations continues, and the Raiders and the Patriots say they can withhold Brown's money because he violated the terms of his contract. Tom. Kaylee Hartung for us tonight. Kaylee, thank you. Now to the growing concern over the mosquito-borne virus that has taken at least seven lives, known as Eastern Equine Encephalitis, or Triple E, the most recent deaths reported in Connecticut and Massachusetts. Residents urged to continue to use insect repellent until the weather turns colder. At least 27 people may be infected in at least six states. Next, the dramatic rescues at a nursing home in Allentown, Pennsylvania. A three-alarm fire breaking out in the middle of the night forcing 82 people and five staff members out of the building, some, as you see here, from second floor windows. Several of those residents taken to the hospital. Here's ABC's Marcy Gonzalez. Nerve-wracking rescues overnight at this Pennsylvania senior living facility. Residents climbing out of windows, clinging to firefighters as flames shoot out of the roof. We got heavy fire in the upstairs of the building. The fire starting around 3 this morning. A terrifying wake up for the more than 80 people living there. We received a call that the 200 rooms on the second floor are now smoke filled. Firefighters working through that heavy smoke, helping everyone safely escape. I'm happy to say that everybody had been evacuated and is uh, accounted for. My understanding is that there's no critical or major injuries. Tonight, officials assessing this damage, investigating what caused this fire. There's no initial indication or information that there was any kind of suspicious or criminal activity, but obviously that's something that we would uh, uh, have as part of our investigation. Nine people, including two firefighters, were treated for minor injuries, and tonight we're told staff members at that facility are busy trying to find new housing for those displaced residents. Tom. Marcy, thank you. Now to the mounting tensions between the U.S. and Iran. The Iranian president overseeing a military parade today in Tehran, warning foreign forces to, quote, stay away from the region. It comes as the Pentagon prepares to send more U.S. troops and air defense equipment to Saudi Arabia after that massive attack on its oil facilities. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo today defended that response. Apparently the Iranians are bloodthirsty and looking for war. President Trump and I were looking for a diplomatic resolution to this. Now, President Trump says he has no intention of meeting with Iranian leaders during this week's United Nations General Assembly. And there's a new theory tonight about what caused that mysterious illness called the Havana Syndrome. Workers at the U.S. and Canadian embassies in Havana started getting sick back in 2017, you'll remember. Investigators have focused on high-pitched sounds inside the embassies as the possible cause, but Canadian researchers now say the illnesses might have been caused by a pesticide used to kill mosquitoes carrying the Zika virus. Among the symptoms of exposure, 
permanent brain injury. And there's much more ahead on World News Tonight this Sunday. The